Hey everyone, so now that you saw my update video and noticed that I'm going to be back on YouTube very slowly, uh, I'll probably upload maybe one or two videos a week if I can. But anyways, uh, today we're going to do a Mythbuster video. It's been a long time since I last promised you, it's been years. Now I'm finally going to record one. So this is going to be Tarantula Mythbuster video 55. I know like I usually do old worlds on the odd one and new worlds on the even, but I don't really have any old worlds left to feature on my channel. Um, I'm not sure if I did the Orphanaceous Filipinus, uh, the Filipino orange, but if I didn't, I will uh, make a separate feeding uh, Mythbuster video on that species. Gotta, gotta check my playlist. So. Anyways, to today we're going to film a Mythbuster video on the uh, Sparabophia hoffmanni, which is the South American horned bird eater. So, let me give you a little information about it. So, the way you pronounce it, going back to my old school teacher ways, uh, is called, it's pronounced the following, Sparabothria. Hoffmanni. Again, that's Sphero-Bothria Hoffmanni. So let's go have a look at the specimen and see how... Hey guys, so it's been a while since I last made a Mythbuster video and I did promise several times over the past couple years that I was supposed to make a video. Today is the day where I will make a new Tarantula Mythbuster video. So uh, it's number 55 in the series. I was supposed to film an old world species but I think I'm exhausted on my possible ones that I have. I recently got an Orphanaceous Filipinus, which is the Filipino orange, uh, which is over here. A new specimen I recently got. So I'm gonna check my playlist to see if I have one. If I don't have one, I will make a video on it. I'm gonna show you guys what my female looks like. So what you're looking here is a female uh, South American horned bird eater. Yeah, that's what it's called, and it's kind of uh, unique to see a horned species that is not from Africa. <laughs> Usually, uh, those are called the Serotajara species. So, the way we pronounce the uh, scientific name is the following. Aspero Bothria Hoffmanni. So, there we go. Aspero Bothria Hoffmanni. It's actually not a very terribly difficult uh, scientific name to um, pronounce. It's actually one of the easier ones. All right, so I've kept this species, I would say a good five years. And they're not very easy to find. Uh, they're actually quite rare. Uh, I remember Tarantula Canada had specimens like a half inch or three quarters of an inch going for $80 and a female around three inches was going for around two hundred dollars so uh definitely they're not a cheap species but also they're not very common either especially when you think of bird eaters you would you would obviously think uh agent Nicolata or el parahibana but uh, this is definitely a nice species to have and i'll show you guys uh, the characteristic horn on the carapace typically which you would think of a marshali so I'm just going to move her very gently. Uh, she's a bit hungry. Okay, so... I don't know if you can actually see right on the carapace. Uh, this is where you would find the horn. Now, it's a really nice horn. It's uh, not very big. It's typically what you would see in a juvenile... Uh, Saratajarish Marshali, which is definitely my favorite of the horned baboons. But there we go, you can actually see what the horn looks like. Now, the horn really, I'm not sure if it has any purpose or not, but <laughs> it really looks very cool. Okay, so temperature requirements of these guys. 95% uh, of them of all teas, you can keep them room temperature and they're going to be extremely happy. So I keep my room around, I would say what, 72 to 73 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, no heater actually. I mean, I just have my fan going on over 
in the background and she's suitable like she'll eat and has no uh, effect on her health uh, humidity conditions uh, they do like it a little bit semi moist so um, after this video I'm going to just soak the substrate uh, you want to do it maybe um, once a week or once every two weeks depending on your ventilation if you have a really well ventilated enclosure uh, like these critter keepers you probably want to do it once a week uh, if you have one of those acrylic ones you probably want to keep do it uh, do it less so uh, let's see temperament um, they're reportedly skittish um, they're not defensive whatsoever but I don't recommend them handling them because uh, they do tend to be skittish and if they do fall unfortunately uh, they will uh, rupture their abdomen which will result in death uh, feeding of these guys, like, there are immensely uh, over eaters, so I can demonstrate for you. So you're going to get a little feeding video in the Mythbuster video. So I give these guys crickets and superworms because Blaptica dubia roaches are illegal in Canada. That's why you can't find them. But as you can see, these guys are really hungry eaters and they're like Saiyans in <laughs> Dragon Ball where they're going to eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and eat till they're full. <laughs> so there we go. You can see, you can truly appreciate the size of the horn on there. All right, now for about mating these guys. So I went to uh, the tarantula.su website. I'm going to uh, link it into the video description. Uh, that's my only source of information that I have it beyond my personal experience. I've never actually mated personally uh, these species, partly because this is the only specimen in Canada that I found uh, that was a female. And I bought it and never looked back on getting another one. Um, now I can't find them. <laughs> so um, mating could go either way. Uh, generally they're like most tarantulas. If you feed the female well enough uh, she should be okay. Uh, if the female isn't really in a good mood uh, she could probably attack the male and likely kill him. Uh, but if you do uh, get an egg sac from these species uh, generally uh, expect around 300 to 400 eggs uh, so it's a pretty decent yield uh, for uh, a species of this nature so for the recommendations would I keep the species honestly I would because it's a really really cool species and uh, I would definitely recommend this over the Saratajara species uh, if you want a horn species and you're still uh, fairly new in a hobby uh, this is a New World species that does have urticating hairs on the uh, abdomen, but the venom isn't potent enough to cause a significant reaction. Because I know with Old World bites, uh, they are very painful, and especially the venom could do a number of things to you. Um, but uh, this species, if it were to bite you, it would probably feel um, like a bee sting. You will probably get a couple of redness that may last a couple of minutes to a few hours depending on uh, your reaction to the bite but definitely a not a, a venomous tarantula albeit but not very potent uh, being it's a new world species that comes from uh, South America um, I think that is about all I have to say for the species Definitely recommend keeping this one. Definitely one of my favorites of the uh, bird eaters simply because of the unique horn. You never actually see these on tarantulas other than Saratajaris. But definitely a nice species worth having. Alright guys, so uh, that concludes uh, my Tarantula Mythbuster video 55. I do hope you enjoyed watching it. Certainly uh, feels good. Uh, to be back and making videos and certainly very content with that so guys i want to thank you for watching the video hope you have a lovely day afternoon or evening wherever time you're watching it and don't forget to rate comment and subscribe so 
Um, next video uh, we'll be doing is the feeding video, which uh, will be a nice start to the year 2021.